Good morning, Rutherford County. This is Peter and Kimberly Sutulov uh, with Word of Faith Fellowship. We're happy to be this morning with you, and it's a great privilege for me to have my wife accompanying me this morning. We have a very good news, cheerful, joyful news to share with you this morning. Some of the things God, uh, that God has been doing in our hearts and our lives, and we always love at the Word of Faith to share them with others because what happens is it builds our faith watching what people does in other people's lives builds our faith and tells us yes we can trust god for our lives too so that's how we draw strength from one another we uh, we get what god has for us and we share it with others so of course during the shutdown basically what we want to share with you some of the things that god has done in our hearts in our lives during this time of trouble these these uh, difficult times that our nation has been going through our uh, counties our families all of us have been a part of it in to one extent or another so we have some of the things to share with you what actually happened we're real people and it's a real life so we're going to share with you some of the real examples to what really has been happening so uh, we can be encouragement to you and god uh, continues work in our hearts daily as things come up he makes us stronger today so we can be prepared for what comes tomorrow because if it's not coronavirus as you very well know now writing is going on something is going on and on and on so we want to have Jesus deep in our heart our foundation built on him so it does not matter what happens which way the wind blows we are going to stand because we know our Jesus and we love Jesus and from that place we're going to be standing and we're going to be standing together because we love to fight together That's right. again as I said I'm so privileged to have my wife Kimberly with me today and uh, uh, I'm privileged yeah. to be here thank you Welcome, Rutherford County. We're so grateful to be here. I just want to start with a, a scripture. It's in Romans 8, 28. It says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. And what Peter's talking about is during this shutdown, we were finding everything that what we were going through and what we were experiencing is it was good from God. We had goodness coming from God. Uh, you know, so one of the things where when the shutdown happened we were all at home um we we had to learn a whole different way of living like everyone else so so we had to limit our spending at the beginning we weren't sure what was going to happen so here i know for me and my thinking was okay jesus help us what's going to happen next what's going on you know so i had to anchor my soul in jesus uh like for instance when we go to the grocery store i go to the grocery store I try to buy two boxes of tissue and there was only one available per customer or one can of beans per customer, you know, or you'd go to get toilet paper, there was no toilet paper. So what was I going to do? Was I going to start feeling the pressure of the situation, the uncertainty of the situation? I just said, Jesus, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust right. you. And these now seem a little trivial but at the beginning when you weren't sure really what was going to happen it all kind of seemed a little big you know so i also wanted to reference about paul uh where he said in philippians 4 uh 12 13 he said he knew how to live in abundance and he knew how to be abased and even though we weren't really living abased we everything was fine for us but I had to keep that in my heart and in my mind. You know, Jesus, I'm going to trust you if I have nothing, if I can find no toilet paper, if I can find not enough beans at the store. I'm going to trust you. And, you know, he said he's learned to live in any and all circumstances. And the secret of facing every situation, whether well-fed or going hungry, which we were not going hungry. That's right. You know, we were not going hungry. Uh, it was, we were having sufficiency. We had enough to spare or going without which a couple times you know i had to go to a different store <laughs> but we certainly weren't going without but paul said i have strength for all things in christ who empowers me i'm ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength in me and so that's where the big thing that we are finding is we are finding strength in jesus we are finding our trust in jesus we are finding 
everything we needed was in Jesus. So when those thoughts came, like what's going to happen, you know, what's the next step? It, it was Jesus. We're just going to trust you with our lives. That's right. Uh, one of the things that might be not as uh, big of a problem to uh, uh, in the, in comparison to some of the troubles that other people have gone through, uh, for example, uh, we have a, a son, he is 15 years old, he was scheduled to graduate May 31st, actually yesterday. Well, that didn't happen. Um, he was scheduled to start his uh, uh, dr uh, driving driver's ed one week before the shutdown happened and of course needless to say he was so much looking forward to it and here we go now maybe two three months later and that still hadn't happened it may be seem uh, like trivial trivial th things to some people but these are th some of the things just uh, what happened in in our family's life and we had to trust Jesus and we had to encourage our son. We're going to trust Jesus. It's going to happen. You are going to graduate and you are going to drive. So there's nothing to worry about. God has a hold of it. He knew what was going to happen and we're going to trust him. Um, Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 8 says this. We are pressed on every side by troubles, but not crushed and broken. We're perplexed because we don't know why things happen as they do. But we don't give up and we don't quit. Isn't that something that's, this, this uh, when we first heard about the shutdown, the talks were, was like, well, uh, it's still April 15th, then it's till April 30th, then it went into May, and uh, we're still not fully opened. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but here are the things, this scripture says, we're perplexed we don't know why things happen but god does in the meantime he wants to change our hearts so our That's trust right. is in him he wants to work patience in our hearts to whatever we thought the plans that we had we wanted to accomplish something it's going to be on his timetable and through this he is teaching us how to trust him another thing i'm sure everyone just about everyone in the united states had to face was the financial uncertainty People didn't know if they're going to have jobs. Many people lost their jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I, we we didn't know what was going to happen, when it was going to stop, when everything is going to uh, pick up again. So we were putting our trust in God, That's right. not looking in the natural, but putting our trust in God. And in Romans uh, 5 verse 3 says this, Moreover, let us also be full of joy now. And so we are learning and we're still learning it's every day scripture be full of joy now god says now no conditions no circumstances should sway that be full of joy now let us exult and triumph in troubles and rejoice in our sufferings knowing that pressure and affliction and hardship they do something they produce patient and unswerving endurance so those things that we're going through that pressure, that affliction, that hardship, it produces something in us. And that's what we want. Why do we want this? Because tomorrow there will be another storm. The day after tomorrow, there will be another situation, another storm. We want that Word of God produce something in us to when that storm comes, next storm comes, we are stronger tomorrow right. than we were today on, or we, want, we were yesterday. But we've got to pass the test today. And that's what, what we do. That's right. And I want to point out something also when that scripture it, where it says that it produces patient and unswerving endurance. And I will say that that's not a real strength in my life yet, but it is in my husband's. It's in, in Peter. He can be very patient and very enduring. And I needed that stability. And he would lead me to Jesus and say, now, okay, we're going to take hold of Jesus and we're going to trust him. And I would anchor my heart in what the word of God had to say. But that's where we need each other. That's right. I need his gift and he needs my gift. I need her gift even more <laughs> than she does mine, I think, at times. <laughs> no, no. So, so I needed that. When I would feel a little shaky, like I'm not sure, sure what's going on, we'd run to Jesus and his gift would help me and I would that's stand right. strong. And in Evan, he would stand strong and... That's what we purpose to do while we were in the shutdown is to help each other and and walk each other through things and be there for each other. That's right. Um, one of the things we learn is 
to appreciate one another. Yes. Not only our immediate family, but we really learned also to appreciate our church family. People that we took for granted. We went to church just about three, uh, four or five days out of, in the, uh, out of the week. We saw our friends, we saw our family, we, we, uh, we had fellowship, we talked, uh, we visited each other's homes. It, it was normal life, what we call as a normal life. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden it came to a, everything came to a screeching halt. So w during this time, we learn to appreciate the people that God put in our lives. Even though we were not able to see each other, but we were praying for each other, we were holding on to each other. Exactly. Our church uh, friends l became so dear to our hearts, we really cared for one another and we prayed for one another. Besides what God's been doing in our hearts with, with our immediate families and, and households, mm -hmm. we really love our church family. And we found out that we really miss them and we love them so much. And we really found out that we really, the, the level of appreciation has changed in our hearts to just to see somebody and be able to say hi. <laughs> of course, right now we're still in the second stage of reopening. We still have to do social distancing and everything, but we do get to see each other's faces now more often. And it's exciting. It's exciting. It brings us joy. It's an encouragement. Because, yes. Uh, I'll read in uh, 2 Corinthians 4, 17 through 18. Uh, it says, For our present troubles are small, and they won't last long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can now see. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things that we see now will soon be gone, and the things we cannot see will last forever. And keeping that in mind, you know, when we couldn't, go to church, which is very dear to us. You know, we need that. The body the body of Christ needs to be together. We had to keep our eyes fixed on that, that this is a temporary thing. This is not going to be forever. Thank you, Jesus. And we will be together again. Same thing with the different trials we were experiencing at home, you know, uh, that this is temporary, that God wanted to do a work in our hearts while we were at home. God wanted to do a work in our hearts to learn to appreciate each other more. That's right as a family but appreciate our brothers and sisters in christ even more and from that place of uh, appreciating one another uh during the shutdown time due to uh, the nature of the business or the company i work for i was able to work every day but one thing was uh, certain uh it was stay at home order so what that meant was it was there all the time that meant you couldn't just run off and run errands you couldn't just go to your uh, friend's house, run to the church, or run here and run there. The only thing you knew when it was time to go home after work, you went straight home. And you know what? I can tell you that God so changed my heart. I wanted to go home. I wanted to see my family. I wanted to be with them. God put such deep appreciation, so much deeper, the appreciation for my family, for my wife, for my son, was so much greater and deeper than before. Uh, I don't know why God was doing this, but I know He has a plan. Yeah. Because really, we, when we have something, we take things for granted. But when they're taken away, then things begin to, to appear different to us. So I can tell you, I was looking forward when my job was uh, time to work was over, I was looking forward coming home and seeing my family and being with them because we, we couldn't just go for the rest of the day somewhere, just run to Spartanburg or run here, run there or, or do something. So uh, we learn to spend time with each other and appreciate one another. Mm -hmm. We did many things together and we enjoy them very much. Um, I'm going to read one scripture in Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 4. I believe we began to understand this scripture. And this scripture has so much more meaning to me today than before. And it says this, Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Two are better than one because they have a good, more satisfying reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and he has not another to lift him up. And that was, uh, that's what Kimberly shared just a few minutes ago. 
that we are there to support one another, to help one another, right. and we love doing it because we need one, uh, each other. Verse 11, it says this, Again, if two lie down together, then they have warmth. But how can one be warm alone? And though a man might prevail against him who is alone, two will stand him. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. And that's where, when we have Jesus, it's that threefold cord is not quickly broken. That's when we support one another. That's when we help one another, especially in the times like this. That's right. And in Romans 12, 16, it says, Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but readily adjust yourself to people and things, and give yourselves to humble tasks. Never overestimate yourself or be wise in your own conceits. And keeping that in mind, when you're with the same people all the time, whether it be your family members or, in this case, our family, uh, you know, we are being mindful to not overestimate ourselves. Be considerate of, of each other. Look out for each other's needs. Not that we weren't already doing that, but it's just God was putting it more and more in our hearts, stronger in our hearts. That's right. And um, it's especially important never to estimate uh, yourself. And think about yourself that you're wise and you have the answer for whatever the situation might be it's very very important to stay humble and teachable because God wants to teach us sometimes we get the presumptive and we think that we're the ones that know uh, how things need to play out uh, yet it's the opposite it's our spouse or maybe our friend are they're the ones that have the a whole a hold of the will of God and the purpose of God. And we need to be humble enough to say, yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. And we need to be able to say, Jesus, teach me, show me. Uh, you know, and we, we learn how to submit to one another. Uh, one of the things that happened during this time, um, a month, two, two months ago, was um, probably like with many of you, once you had more time, uh, you could do things that normally ordinarily you couldn't be doing before uh you we put off many things to do them later sometimes when we get time and we didn't have that time well all of a sudden that time showed up and there was time to do things take care of your house clean out your attic maybe your basement uh do some remodeling painting walls so we uh we have a very nice beautiful home but some of the um walls we wanted to change color uh paint in different color so and uh, uh, uh that's that's a very uh, good illustration of how we can learn to receive from one another here's what happened uh kimberly was at our friend's uh office and she saw a wall uh paint in one of their rooms and she loved it so much yeah, i think it would go great with the fabric that we had in there so that's right so she was thinking this wall paint would be great in our dining room so mm -hmm. she got a sample from the, our friends she got a sample that can she brought it home and put some uh, a little bit of that paint on the wall and it was matching perfectly it was matching the fabrics that were in the curtains it was matching what we needed so we were thinking okay we're gonna get paint and and paint this room so i went to lowe's and i brought them the can of paint to match and I was so happy that I brought the match home. So I come home and I started putting uh, paint on the wall and it does not match. It's not the same shade. If you ever done any decorations, you know that paint color is very, very important. It has to match and flow the curtains, uh, the fabrics, because if it doesn't, if, they sh if it's a shade off, it's gonna clash. So it's not gonna work. So here's, after we found out that that paint didn't work, then where did we go, honey? Oh, we, we, we tried three other times, so four total. Four times total, we went out of town. Uh, PPG, the place that actually came, uh, the paint came from, brought it home, put it on the wall, it didn't work. But you know what, in the meantime, what was happening? The point of me saying this is bring this up. We ended up going, like she said, four or five times different places. Mm -hmm. Ended up going to all the way to Hendersonville or Asheville where we finally got the right paint. But what happens? It took many, many days, maybe a week and a half to two weeks. 
and just when you think okay you got it you have a little bit of time you can do it and you cannot do it so what happens there was an opportunity to get a little bit of discouraged but at the same time we had each other that's right just to tell each other god is going to give us the right pain that's right. it's going to be okay. it's going to be okay it's going to be there for us those little trials that the devil wants to try to make you well, to get you upset or, or get you to doubt God. I mean, we're using simple, trivial things. But if we can get a hold of those things in Jesus, then when the big things come, we're already learning how to walk with each other and help one another to stay in Jesus. That's right. In Ephesians 4, 2, it says this, Living as becomes you with complete lowliness of mind, humility, and meekness, unselfishness, gentleness, mildness, with patience, bearing with one another and making allowances because you love one another. So we love one another. Mm -hmm. God says in His Word, we are to make allowances for one another, even in times when we see things differently. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 5, 15 and 16 says this, Look carefully then how you walk. Live purposefully not as the unwise but as wise sensible intelligent people making the very most of the time buying up each opportunity because the days are evil and that's what god showed us we were buying up each opportunity to be with each other and to build each other up and appreciate each other that's right every day was something special in jesus mm -hmm. because he wanted us to be able to know him better to hear his voice more clearly to help one another be more aware of each other and then again where peter said about you know our church family we couldn't be with them but in our hearts we were with them we were praying for them you know making that phone call or sending a text message finding out what a need was in prayer and praying like day and night it just felt so good to have everybody in your heart and you know it's not that you weren't that way before but we kind of did take things for granted where yeah it's my church family yeah it's my family but when you're it's well we know that saying in in out there absence makes the heart grow fonder well when you're when you don't have your blessing with you all the time you start realizing hey i really had it good we really had it good with our friends and our ministers and our church and our you know so it was a good learning experience and we're going to keep that in our hearts that's right i wanted to read one more scripture uh it's in romans 50 uh chapter 15. it says now may the god who gives the power of patient endurance steadfastness and he supplies encouragement grant you to live in such harmony and such full sympathy with one another in accord with christ jesus so through these times we have learned how to have sympathy and learning how to live in harmony one one another mm -hmm. because th there was no better time to learn that together right. that uh, that together you may with united hearts and one voice praise and glorify the god and father of our lord jesus it says welcome and receive to your hearts one another that's one of the key points to me in this scripture it says welcome and receive to your hearts one another yes. you know we can maybe live together we can be a family we can be a church family but did we receive each other right. into our hearts because if we receive in each other in our hearts we're gonna care for one another we're gonna love one another how jesus wants us to love one another receive it to our hearts then even as christ has welcomed and received you for the glory of god jesus christ he actually received us into his heart he laid down his life he gave up his life for us so we can do the same that's right and really the troubles that we're going through they're in comparison to other people's troubles that they're right. going through they're very minute they're very minor we're talking about inconveniences really what we're talking about mm -hmm. those are inconveniences but knowing what other people live actually live through different countries maybe that's right. it puts a, a totally different perspective but god is teaching us through this time what he has for us in store right now again even those little things trivial things mm -hmm. he's going to teach us and do something in our heart to prepare us for tomorrow and besides that maybe our friends is going to need help 
Maybe, maybe our child is going to need help. Maybe okay. our parents are going to need help. And they're going to need the encouragement. They're going to need something that they're going to have ears open to hear because, hey, they've been through it. Let me listen to them. See what happens. How do they handle it? And that's why we want Jesus to be a part of what we're doing. That's right. Uh, one thing also, I have thought about this after, but that Peter grew up in, in former Soviet Union, the former Soviet Union. And, of course, you know, going to church was not something that was a normal thing. It was underground church that he went to. And he, I want you to share about this, but he said that the, the people in that church were so full of joy and love, even though their circumstances were not good. You know, the government was against them. Their neighbors were against them, but they had each other and they loved right. each other and they loved Jesus. And it was so obvious. Uh, I'll never forget. I was a little boy going to underground church uh, in the former Soviet Union. And uh, one thing, it's always stuck with me. It's those shiny faces that I saw when we went to church, which was at people's homes. That was the church from home to home. When they would start singing those hymns and psalms, their faces shone. They had such joy in their hearts. It showed, and they knew the only thing they had was each other. The only thing they knew was the Word of God and encouragement through the Word of God. Because the entire country, the government itself, neighbors, everybody was ridiculing, everybody was against you. So it's not like some people were for you, some were against you. It's like the entire society was against you. They were looking at you that, that you, you were not right. So the only strength they drew was from each other. This little time that we had was we are learning to draw strength from Jesus and each other. And that's one thing I never forget, those shiny faces that were so full of life of God and love of God. They loved each other. Those people loved each other. They trusted each other because they didn't have anybody else. That's all they had. We have a song uh, this morning for you and Kimberly's going to sing it and I'm going to help her sing. <laughs> Well, it was so good to share with you this morning. I hope you were encouraged this morning and I hope you take something for you from our sharing and we love you so much. Yes. We wanted to tell you that Word of Faith 
fellowship loves you all we yes. pray constantly for our nation for our county because people are in our hearts of we want to be a blessing to everybody yes. so there are many programs that you can watch testimonies you can see on our word of faith fellowship website so please come and join us on mondays wednesdays and fridays we're here at wcab from 8 30 to 9 o'clock we love you so much have a great day